What's going on, everybody? Exit here with yet another week of Nuclear Bucket Living. Thank you for tuning in. So pretty much this week, we're going to set some time aside and talk about how hard and how difficult it's been shooting any of the video and any photos here in this specific Titan One. Now, outside of the other missile complexes that we own and that we're operating on, the Titan One is absolutely the biggest out of them all. Now, when I actually started shooting this complex, it was almost three years ago. Last week's episode that we just aired actually was probably one of my initial first kind of entrances in here where I put a camera on and wasn't just snapping photos. I wanted to be able to get a nice walkthrough of this complex and it was awesome actually looking back and seeing the old uh, you know, tiles on the floors and everything and seeing what the control dome used to look like. You know, a lot, a lot has happened since we've actually been uh, shooting this docu-series for YouTube. After watching that footage back, it reminded me 110% of how difficult it really is to shoot inside of this place. I've become almost numb to it throughout the years because just trial and error and everything to get me to this point, it seems almost like old hat, but I easily forget how difficult it was starting to shoot here three years ago. Now where I started in this whole gamut of abandoned photography and videography stems all the way back up to the Northeast. The one thing that I was drawn to 100% was abandoned buildings. The whole Urbex community at that point in time too was really just starting to blossom on social media. It really wasn't around that much. There was the hardcore guys back in the day that used to run places all over, but there was never an Instagram to post it. There was never a Facebook to post it. There was not even I have a couple websites here and there, but not to what we know as social media today. I used to shoot places like Kings Park Psychiatric Center. One of the most fascinating complexes that I've ever visited and it was right in my own backyard really truly it was a stone throw away to be able to travel all over the United States and other countries as well all these complexes and all these places that are just left to rot I've always been fascinated with the idea of life after people what is going to happen what is this planet going to look like after the human condition is removed it's always fascinated me so when I came into the Titan One, I was already very well versed in shooting abandoned places that are very low lit. There's, there's practically no light in a lot of these places. People that have literally been in the game that is, are watching this right now understand what it is to shoot these places. It takes a certain type of technique and actual talent as well. When it comes down to the Titan One, this was a whole other behemoth that I've never touched before out of the decade plus of shooting. Some place that is down underground that is just completely devoid of any light. Now, out of all of the challenges that I faced trying to document this place, first and foremost, lighting. When I tell you that there was no light down here, I really mean it. There was barely any light down here. There was a couple lights that were on in the elevator shaft headed down actually into the lobby, the main lobby. But other than that, there was nothing. So learning how to shoot in complete darkness with no sunlight or no even moonlight. I mean, when you talk about astrophotography, you're looking at something that you're dealing with at least a little bit of light, but not really too much. Down here, there is no daylight at all. There's no moonlight. There's no nothing. So it's just complete darkness. Funny that I actually say this is because the first time that I came down here, I was so ill prepared that I didn't even have a tripod to be able to set up long exposures, which you have to use for light painting and other techniques to be able to actually capture something like if it is in the daytime. Now, the second time that I came back to this complex, had the tripod ready to go. And actually, I'm going to show right now on the screen of uh, so the first photo set that I ever took here in the Titan One almost three years ago. Now, as this progressed throughout the years, it started turning from a lot of photo taking and documenting what was here to then video. Uh, myself and Nick, when we decided to really kind of embark upon this, it was really about bringing the viewer into what we were doing and how we're going to rehabilitate this place that was made to literally murder millions of people and turn it into a very positive thing that we have laid out for our future goals. So pretty much it goes from photo into video and then more gear, external lighting. Um, even then it was still trying to figure out a lot of photographers and videographers. If you're watching this, you understand 
on how hard it is to get the right light even with your shutter settings and having crazy flicker in your videos and everything like that. We're not trying to give anybody uh, epileptic shock or anything like that. So that was a huge thing to get over as well. The overview at the end of the day of what we've been doing here is trial and error to where we've literally gotten to where we're at right now. Now, over the past couple years, we've had other photographers and videographers step within this complex and do what they do. Uh, one specific photographer uh, came with Alice Gould on a star-studded tour that we gave with Pete from Chromehoves.net. He pretty much runs the grandfathered website of Titan Ones. He's like the guy that you really want to go to when it comes down to knowing the information and just anything about the Titan. It's Pete. Outside of that, we had a couple people that actually came here that decommissioned it. So you have people, how should I say this? You have people with cell phones to professional equipment. So past anything that we've even done here, we have had a wide array of photographers and videographers that have stepped inside this complex. Even contest winners. We had a winner from one of our uh, contests that we ran over on Instagram come through. His name was Fritz, awesome photographer outside of Kansas City. He actually does it for a job. Uh, he works over at an awesome amphitheater right in Kansas City. And um, he's also an urban exploration photographer. The guy takes awesome pictures and we were really excited for him to actually come through and see what he was gonna do with the complex, you know, through his own camera. While he was here, it was just really awesome to kind of just witness somebody that really appreciated the history, but also shedded light on how even I've been shooting it. There were so many things that he was doing that I didn't do and that I didn't look at. Myself personally, I try to show you all the grand scheme of everything, right? I try to show you how big this place really is. Even where I stand right now in the antenna silos, I probably look a lot bigger in the screen than compared to what this is, but it's huge behind me. One thing specific that kind of blew my mind was Fritz literally came in here with no tripod at all and was blasting handheld shots. When you do long exposure shots like that and you have to hold your camera in the same position to be able to get a photo, it is insanely difficult. I tried to light it up for him as much as I could, uh, but at the end of the day, he literally would just ran through here all handheld and got these images that we're gonna show right now. So pretty much this brings me to us being able to offer something super, super special to you, the viewer. We're gonna offer a full day's tour and shooting event here at this Titan One nuclear missile complex. That is gonna involve everything from learning how to shoot down in these lighting situations. It's gonna be all about the history of this Titan and pretty much just everything all around it. We're gonna go in depth for a full day from literally sunrise to sunset. We're gonna be teaching you everything from how to shoot in low light, no light, and also well-lit areas like here in the antenna silo to be able to get your best product of what you wanna achieve when in a situation like this. There's a lot of urban explorers and people that might even wanna be able to get into photography or videography, but don't really have the means or understand what it takes to get good media out of these places. I can't stress it enough. It's very difficult if you do not have the knowledge. Now this is gonna be a full day event that's gonna include a full tour of this specific Titan One nuclear missile complex. Also a how-to crash course videography and photography class taught by myself. Now my main objective for this whole outing and event is to basically teach you all everything from how to, but also how to be able to distribute these, how to be able to actually get your media out there. We live in a day and age where everything is YouTube and Instagram and TikTok and all this other stuff. So pretty much gonna take you into just everything that we do and how it's worked for us along the way. Now, if you're at all interested at this class that we're offering, please email us at nuclearbunkerliving at gmail.com. Or you can contact us over on our Instagram at just nuclearbunkerliving. Now, my main objective with actually going through all this to set this up for you all is to just be able to like really kind of let you all step into my shoes for a second. Just, just to see on how it really is to be able to create art down here. It's something that is very dear to me. I love being able to bring you all along every single week. Nick and myself always talk about 
how much we really love bringing you, the viewer, along on this ride. It has been a roller coaster of emotions and money spent and time lost and just it's it's been a very difficult project i don't think that people really understand how hard it has been and even just to bring you all these weekly episodes sometimes we're filming these things on friday and saturday and it becomes an insane rush to be able to get stuff out every single week but that's what we do it for is for you all and we want to be able to actually give you an experience that no one has had before here there's never been a class taught down here besides launching missiles or the ballistic testing that happened here. So we want to take it into our own hands and really show you all what it is like to kind of step into our own shoes, but also take a lot of information that we can give you and apply it to places outside of this specific Titan one. And just to end out with a personal note for myself, I just want to speak directly to you, the viewer, that we can't thank you all enough to be able to watch this every single week and go back through the catalog of this is episode 90, I believe. So we're almost at a hundred episodes in a row. This has never stopped. We've literally just, it's, we've been pumping out content every single week and the work still continues. The video work still continues. The hard labor continues. Everything that is going on, it is just going more and more and further and further. When I really think back to when we started, this project meant a lot to me before, but it means the world to me now. I can't begin to describe how thankful we really are to be in a position that we are in right now to be able to do this daily. We're here daily. This is a constant project. This hasn't stopped for years now. And yes, there's been trials and tribulations, but it's always been in our best effort to give you all the best content and really bring you along for this entire ride. So personally, I just want to say thank you all for all the continued support. Also, we have a super, super, super exciting episode for you all next week, dealing with possibly some 3D mapping going on in our complex. So I'll leave you off with a little bit of a cliffhanger like that. Again, exit here. Thank you again for all the support and we'll catch you next week.